God bless us. God bless all of us. And I'm always happy to come to your office. I'm always grateful to come to your house. I'm a pale kwa biashara yako. I don't know how the economy is pushing you or you are pushing the economy. But sooner or later, life will change. Life will change because our God is a life changer, a future changer. And I know God is on your side. Please let me know where you could be watching us from. This is Dr. Oracle coming to you live. Whatever time it is, it could be eight at night. It could be seven. It could be one o'clock. Whatever time zone you are watching us, I want to promise you that your destiny can change and your destiny will change. Why? Because our God is in the business of changing destinies of people. He met Abraham. Destiny changed. Met Moses. Destiny was changed. And he met Gideon. Life transformed. Met Hannah. Her destiny changed. Every man that meets God and have an encounter. Things don't remain the same. And I want to tell you, even you that is watching me right now, your circumstance, conditions are not your position. Your condition is not your position. Yes. And every disappointment will turn into an appointment in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, yes. This is Dr. Oracle coming to you live from Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi. Where are we located? I want you to look at where we are located. This is where we are, Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi. We are on Moranga Road. I don't know why you're still at home in Gong, Kiserian, Kitengela. You are in Juja. You are in Roiro. You are all in Kiambu. You are in Limuru. What are you waiting for? This is where we are. I pray for people individually, personally, People come here from all over, and I don't want you to miss your visitation. I don't want you to miss your visitation. Right around Gara, we are right on Moranga Road before you connect Thika Superhighway. This is where God located us, and he planted us here to blossom, and you can be a partaker of this blessing. Every Sunday, 9 o'clock, and also, every Thursday, we have a unique service. It is a deliverance service. This is a deliverance service every Thursday. Breaking limitation, paralyzing the works of the enemy in your life, rendering the activities of the enemy in your life powerless. This is a deliverance service on a Thursday in the morning. I want you to package your sacrifice and come this Thursday. Package your sacrifice, come this Thursday. I'm expecting to see you. We are dealing with breaking family limitation. Whatever limited your mother, whatever limited your father, whatever limits people from becoming God's ordained purpose, that is what we are dealing with right here every Thursday, 9 o'clock. Come early because time and chance happens to all, but you can waste your chance. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Jesus' mighty name. Also Fridays, we gather here for a night of prayer. That is our Kesha from 10 at night all the way to 5 in the morning. Please, 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 please. This is an invitation. Don't be in your blanket when we are praying in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to hear your word and even to hear your voice. I come to you now in the volume of this word. May heaven remember, reward, and perform a miracle around your life. I decree you are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Please press the button, like, share. 
like, share, invite, like, share, invite somebody, tell them Dr. Oracle is live, is live on our live broadcast, that is Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi, all our social uh, platform, social media platform, I want you, yes, appear there immediately. Let me know whether we are also on MOD Nairobi, oh yes, MOD Nairobi, you can see we are on MOD Nakuru, let me know where you could be watching us from, in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to listen to me in a few minutes, I'll be on air, I want to talk on what I term as destiny help us, destiny help us, oh my, this is something beautiful. I have taught in the past about destiny help us. What does destiny help us mean? This means that there are people ordained by God to meet you. There are men, there are women in this world you must meet. There are men and women under the sun who were ordained by God from the day you arrived on earth and their assignment was to assist you. The assignment on earth was to pave way for you. That is why a man like Jesus Christ needed John the Baptist to prepare his way, to prepare his roadways. That is why it is important. Every man requires a man, and that is why I am calling them destiny helpers. Their assignment is to make sure that you arrive your God-ordained destiny, and I pray, may God send helpers to our lives. May God send financial helpers, employment helpers, business helpers, ministry helpers in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, everyone needs someone. Everyone needs someone. And God, number one, becomes our helper, number one. Let's begin by saying God, number one, is our destiny helper, divine helper. Yes, that's why we call them divine. They are God ordained. They are called destiny helpers who are divine. They have been orchestrated by God. They are also those that are not helpers from God, but the enemy orchestrates them to help you how to fail in life. But we are not looking at that. In Psalms 46 verse 1, Psalms chapter 46 and verse 1. I'll go slowly by slowly so that you understand what I'm talking about. Divine helpers. These are destiny helpers. Every time you see divine, it means it is from God. In Psalms 46 verse 1, the Bible says, A song upon Alamoth. That is, God is our refuge and strength. God is our refuge and strength. This is the dimensions where we get our help. Our God is our refuge, number one. Number two, God is our strength. And number three, a very present help. A very present help. So number one, when we talk about divine help, divine help us, we are talking about God being our refuge. He is our strength. Number three, our help in times of trouble. Now, God's design for man on earth was not for man to be an island. God designed man to require another man to reach their destiny. Man requires man to reach his destiny. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18, God initiates the program to help man. God initiated the program to help man. So help is God-ordained program 
to make your destiny colorful. In Genesis 2.18, the Bible says, And the Lord God said, And the Lord God said, What did God say? It is not good that a man should be alone. This is interesting. It is not right. Oh my, I love this. It is not good that a man, that a woman should be alone. It is not good that a pastor, that a preacher, a businessman should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. So God designed a protocol for man which requires man's assistance. I will make him and help me. What does the message or NLT version say? Listen and listen to this. It is not good. When God looked at man, he saw it is not applicable. Man to be doing things alone. Man to be walking alone. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Even you, woman, you are not designed to be alone. Never call yourself single mother. No, but there is no that title in the Bible. There is nothing like single mother. Even you, God will give and make you a helper. So he says, it is not good that the man to be alone. What will I do? I will make a helper who is just right for him. Who is just right for him. So when we are talking about divine helpers, these are personalities that are just right for you. They are just right for you. Very, very important. And everyone needs a divine helper. Follow me very closely now. Divine helpers are of various types, but they are sent on our paths to change the story of our lives. Divine helpers are on assignment to change the story of our lives. Life itself is full of mystery, and God uses man to demystify this mystery. I repeat again, life is full of mysteries. Therefore, God requires another man to demystify the mysteries about man by assisting men reach their divine destiny. Listen to this. Anyone that wants to go far in this life, and go higher in life must understand the principle of being uplifted by divine helpers. Until God sends some certain men into your life, then things are bound to remain the same. I repeat again, until God sends a man sends a woman your way, then your lifestyle may remain the same eternally or until Jesus comes. That is why divine helpers are very, very crucial. And we need to pray that God may send divine helpers. So until God sends some certain men into our lives, things will remain the same. In so many instances, God used men to answer the prayers of men. God used men to answer the prayers of men. Listen and listen to this. Many a times we ignore that God cannot use a man to reach a man. That is what happens. Listen to this. Listen and listen to this. I want to show you something that uh, will just open your eyes today. Listen and read with me in Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter number 6. 
I will read from verse number 6 to 8. I want you to listen to this. Judges chapter 6 from verse number 6 to 8. Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. So Midianites were the agents of the devil to starve Israel. <laughs> they were the agent of starvation to make sure that Israel suffer starvation. That is important to notice. Israel was greatly impoverished or starved because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Very important. The children of Israel cried to the Lord for help. For help. Until you cry to God for help, men may never come for your help. That's why it is important to know divine helpers. The Bible says, when they cried because of the Midianites, because of the Midianites, the Bible says that the Lord sent a prophet. The Lord sent a prophet. May God send a prophet your way. May God send a prophet in that business today. May God allocate an angel to assist you where danger is looming. I pray that God will unleash and release. Yes, angels in human form. Angels in human form that will be able to carry you to your next level in this life. When the children of Israel cried because of the Midianites, the Bible says that the Lord sent a prophet. The Lord sent a prophet. Talakoshia Tayanda. I decree and I declare from this altar. May this be your day to encounter divine helpers. May this be your season, this hour, this hour. May God send a helper that will call you and unlock your destiny permanently. Are you there? Are you watching together with us? Yes, divine, divine helpers. Yes, people that will hold your hand and carry you to your divine location. That is what I'm talking about. Divine, divine help us. Listen to this. The Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel. So there is always a man, an embodiment of a helper, whose assignment is to come and tell you, Thus says the Lord, you will rise and not fall. You will run and not faint. That is the purpose of divine helpers. Follow me very closely. In so many instances, God used men to answer your prayers. And that is what God did to the children of Israel when they were starved by the Midianites. Listen to this and listen to me very, very carefully. God must inspire, God must lead and ordain someone concerning your life. God must inspire, God must lead and ordain someone concerning your business, concerning your career. There are people ordained concerning your marriage concerning your career, the issues that you're going through in life, there is somebody God has ordained, God has led an inspired 
concerning your life. I pray that personality, may you locate my number today. May you locate our address today. May you locate that woman. Locate that man today in the name of Jesus. I pray, whatever is diverting your destiny, help us. Your divine help us. It will scatter in the name of Jesus. Whatever is diverting your help us, whoever is standing at the gate of your help us, I scatter them in the name of Jesus. May heaven remember, reward you with divine, divine help us. Sako Yanda. Follow me very uh, closely. Yes, listen and listen to me. Education is essential. But there are people that with all their level of education, they are still stagnant in life. Educated but stagnant in life. Beautiful, handsome, skillful, but they are still stagnant in life. They are still stagnant in life. Why? They need helpers. They need a helper. Somebody who can speak and say, I know him. I understand him. Give him that job. Listen to this. Because someone must be employed, even the educated. Yes, that is why any Christian that lacks characters or help us must be pitied. If you lack help us and characters in life, you should be pitied by people because character is a high currency in the system of divine help. Character is a high currency when it comes to the system of divine help. I pray for you. I pray for you that help is coming this week. Help is coming today. Your divine helpers are coming. Let me know where you're watching us from. Are you watching us on our social page, social media platform. Let me know where you could be watching us from. The Lord richly, richly bless you, all those who are online. Marian, Marian, Nyambu, Evelyn, Judith, Kea, Asante, Asante, those who are coming on board. Press the button, like, 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 share, like, 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 share, and keep on inviting somebody. You may invite your helper to watch. You may invite your help and say, because you have helped me, I will also open a door for you. Yes, make sure that you don't watch alone. Press the button, share. Press the button, share. Go to your messenger. Press send, 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 send. Invite them on board. You may help somebody who will become your divine helper. Follow me very closely. Yes, any successful person, any successful man or woman that you have seen, check them very well. They can be traced and tracked to someone that gave them an idea that changed their lives. <laughs> Oracle Television, there must have been somebody. I remember. I remember many, many years, almost 30 years now, I watched our bishop the first time he was on KBC, the first time on KBC. And I said, I will also one day be on television. I will one day be an owner of a television station. <laughs> that is a dream. But for it to reach where it is, men have come on board. The person behind this camera is one of them. The person in the studio, the person editing, the person doing all this. These are people who came on board as helpers. Oh, Gradaya Mama Zai. Listen to this, listen to this. Every man that you see successful, women that are successful, just trace their lives gradually and you can trace and track 
to someone that gave them an idea that changed their lives permanently. Yes, that they gave them a counsel. They gave them counsel that changed their lives. They helped them financial, or they gave them a financial booster. Grandolo Bazogasha. May God give you, may God give you a financial booster, a financial helper who will carry money in a paper bag and bring it to you for your divine assignment. Whether you believe it or not, you will always need men. And the men you require could be your next door neighbor, could be your friend, could be your uncle at the same time. I am reading Genesis, I mean Exodus chapter 2.16. Exodus chapter 2.16. And if you need a mug like mine, you can just talk to us. We'll give you a mug and be taking your soup on your porridge. You can purchase these cups uh, with us here. The Oracle mug, the future is here. Yes, you can place your order and say, I need 10 cups, 10 mugs <laughs> with the Oracle uh, label, with the Oracle label. Oh, yes, we can order them for you and just send them right where you are. Exodus chapter 2, verse 16. Those who are joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome on board. Oh, yes, that is Exodus 2, 16. Moses was a fugitive running away, but he landed to a place that there was a, a water, a water maybe like a, a well. Oh, yes. And that's where we are beginning. And now, the priest of Midian had seven daughters. The priest of Midian had seven daughters. And they came to draw water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. These are girls, ladies. And the shepherds who were stronger came and drove them away. Drove them away. Listen to this. They came and drove them away, but Moses, but Moses. So Moses jumped and rescued the girl from the shepherds. In my translation, King James says, Moses stood up and helped them. Moses stood up and helped them. You need helpers, even in battle, you need help. And Moses stood stood up and helped them and watered their flock. Verse 18, listen to this. And when they came to their father, Ruel, he said, how is it that you have come so soon? When somebody decides to help you, your time is shortened. The years are reduced. Every day when they go to water their animals, they came late in the evening. But that day, they went home early. Divine help us shorten your struggles in life. Look at this. His, their father was even shocked. Listen. He asked them, how is it that you have come home so soon today. What happened? You are always late. You are always late. Telling me, anytime somebody helps you, they are able to destroy the delay in your life. Divine helpers push you further than where you are originally. The next verse, what did they tell their father? Look at this. Because they must have told their father, we must, and they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hands of the shepherds. An, Egyptians, an Egyptian helped us. This is an Egyptian. Oh, yes. An Egyptian helped us. So you need a helper. You need a helper that will make sure that the time you use in this life is not full of sweat, but a sweatless life. So whether you believe it or not, you will always need men. You will always need men 
to shorten your distance in life. You'll always need someone to play some major role in your life, in your marriage, in your business, in your career. You can only access this person through humility. Why can't you humble yourself and tell God, send me a helper? Only a fool will not require a helper. Oh, listen and listen. A movie script can be can be very powerful, but the script cannot act itself. People are needed for it. Yes. Any script in a movie can be very powerful, but it cannot act itself. People are needed for it. Likewise, the script of your destiny can be very powerful, but I want to tell you that people will be needed for that script of your destiny to be a reality. Ah, my goodness. Somebody needs to usher you into their domain and those skills, that talent will be broadcasted. Listen to this. At the same time, it is a mistake and it is an error to fold your hands, to fold your hands, do nothing and expect helpers to come. It does not work that way. You have to jump out of the boat and say, I need to look for these helpers wherever they are. They must locate my life. Listen, you must lay your hands on something. Do something because there is always a venue for a connection with your divine helpers. There is always a venue. Grato by Azoko Shekatayanda. There is always a venue where you connect with your divine helpers. Yes, the venue, the location have a lot to do with your presence. Follow me very closely. Listen, Joseph met a man in prison. <laughs> Ah, location, location. I'm talking about location. Joseph met a man in prison. Actually, two men were in prison. He met them in prison. So location also matters. You can meet your helpers in the market. You can meet your helper in a matatu. Ah, you can meet your helper in a matatu. You can meet your helper in an airport. Listen. Joseph met his helper in a prison. Very, very strange. And when they interacted, time came that these two people dreamt. These people dreamt. And when they dreamt, this young man called Joseph had the gifting or had a gift of interpreting dreams, interpreting dreams. And when he was in prison, these two people had dreams which the, uh, really, really bothered these people. Yes. And because they had no alternative, they had to ask Joseph, please, we need your assistance. We had dreams and we need somebody to interpret we need somebody to interpret these dreams for us. Listen and listen to this. <laughs> oh my, I love this. I love this. That is in Genesis. Yes, this is in Genesis. Oh my. In Genesis chapter 40. In Genesis chapter number 40. We can start from verse number 1. I want you to see this story is a good story to learn from. It came to pass after these things, the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their Lord, the king of Egypt. And uh, because of his anger, the two officers were thrown into the prison. Yes, go ahead. Verse number two, the Bible says, 
Pharaoh was angry against the two officers, against the chief butler and against the chief baker. So he put them in the ward of the house of the captain of the guards into the prison place where Joseph was bound. There are people that you must meet. Listen to this. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and he served them and they continued a season in that prison. What happened? Verse number five, the Bible says, and they dreamt a dream, both of them, each man, his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in prison. Joseph came up to them in the morning, looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. They were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward uh, of the Lord's house, saying, Wherefore, or why are you sad today? Is there a problem? What was their answer? And they said unto him, We had dreamt a dream. And there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said to them, Do not interpretation belong to God. Tell me, I pray you. Then I may tell you what they mean. Listen to what happened. And the chief butler told him the dream to Joseph, saying in him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me. Yes, there was a vine before me, and there were three branches. And it was as though it budded, and her blossom shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. After bringing ripe grapes, what happened? The Bible says, And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Now the interpretation. This is the interpretation of it. Three branches are three days. Oh my, this is great. There are people you must meet in this life. You must meet a Joseph who will interpret your dream. You must, meet, you must be thrown in the prison. You must be thrown in the prison to meet Joseph to interpret your dream and take you back to your position. What did Joseph tell him about the interpretation of the dream? Yet, within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head and restore you to your place, and you shall deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when you are in his, or when you are his butler. The solution was given. That was the solution. What am I saying? This man that was cast into prison, he had to meet Joseph, dream a dream, and at the same time, understand the dream, the interpretation, and be reinstated back to his position. This is very strange. <laughs> ah, listen, but Joseph said, verse 14, that is what I want you never to forget. NLT message Bible. Uh, he said, that is what will happen to you. But he said to him, and please remember me and do me a favor when things go well with you. Mention me to Pharaoh. You need somebody to mention you. Grata by Azoshia Tayada. Mention me to Pharaoh. Mention me to that man that I'm not married. Mention me to that boss that I need a job. Mention me. How are you mentioned? You need a helper. Mention me to Pharaoh so he might let me out of this place. That is what I'm talking about. That is what I am talking about. Divine helpers. Joseph is in prison. He has no family. He has no relative. He has no family member. He's jailed in a foreign land. 
Bata Lokazada, divine helper had to come in the prison. So the location matters a lot. The location matters a lot. You can meet your helper right inside the prison. You can meet your helper right in the market. You can meet him in a matatu. So don't be quiet. It does not cost you anything to tell somebody, Hi, how are you? You look nice. You have a nice dress. You have a good suit. It does not cost any money. Telling somebody you have a nice phone doesn't cost you anything. You have a nice hairstyle. You have a nice suit. You have a nice tie. Let me tell myself, you have a nice tie. <laughs> you need somebody. <laughs> So it doesn't cost anything to tell somebody you look nice, to tell somebody, thank you, I'll see you again. Thank you, God bless you. I meet people in lifts. Even where we stay, there are lifts to 12th floor. You get to third floor, you meet people going downwards. And you, others keep quiet in the lift. But I say, how are you? As uh, we exit that lift, I tell her, have a blessed day. Walk in the Blessings of God today. I got into a lift. We are going to the ground floor. And I meet this woman in the lift. She is so annoyed. Jesus Christ. She's holding some paper bags. And a paper bag fell. I rushed and picked it for her and said, I'm sorry. Uh, she tried to smile a bit. When the lift opened, I went, opened the door again. Of the, the main door out of the lift. I said, have a good day, madam. May you enjoy your day. At least the countenance of her face. I don't know who she is. I don't know where she was going. But talk to somebody. Don't be quiet. Don't be quiet. Don't be silent. You just need to tell somebody, hi, how are you? Yes. You can't just sit in a train and just keep quiet for one full hour. You're not talking to somebody. Saying hello, there's not, don't tell them about your religion. Don't tell them about your religion. Yes. Joseph did not tell the butler, the baker. You know, I am seriously born again. I love the Lord. Jesus is Lord. I cast out devils. You don't have to tell them your religion. Just say hello first. Yes. Just tell them hello. And as they exit, tell them, God bless you. You have not told them about your religion. We were not told to tell people about our religion. Just tell him, God bless you. May you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Oh, yes. Yes, the butlers were in prison and they were worried. Until Joseph asked, is everything okay? There is nothing wrong by asking somebody, can I assist you? Is it okay with you? Are you okay? Yes. Joseph inquired from them. You look so sad today. Is everything okay? And that is how now they opened up. We had dreams. And the first dream, yes, he was told your dream is good. You will be reinstated back. But when you go there, remember me. <laughs> yeah, remember me. Mention my name. Mention my name. The venue, prison, location have a lot to do with your helpers. Joseph met his destiny helper in prison. It was the man he met in the prison that told the king about him. Divine helper. Helpers don't come to a lazy man. Helpers don't come to a lazy man. God must see the amount of your effort. Don't become lazy prayer warrior. Be a prayerful man. Be a prayerful woman. Yes, some of it or sometimes you need to en engage in more efforts to see the value of what you're doing. Yes, listen to this. You must know the value of people. Never ignore people. Just one word from somebody, your salary can be increased. Just one statement. Even your boss, there is a statement you can tell them. Yes. And the following day you find your salary has been increased. You never know. Yes. Yes, you never, never know what words he may require that day. 
Proverbs 29, 23. Proverbs 29, 23. Listen and listen to this. Proverbs 29, 23. Thank you those who are still coming on board. Your divine helpers are coming. Yes, divine helpers are coming in Jesus' mighty name. Pride ends humiliation, while humility brings honor. That is what you require to attract helpers, divine helpers. Pride ends in humiliation, while humility brings honor. What is humility? Asking somebody, are you okay? Can I help you? Are you okay? Is everything okay? How are you, madam? How are you, sir? You have a nice suit. You have a nice hairstyle. You have a nice... It helps. Yes. A man's pride brings him low. But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Put it in NLT or Message Bible. A man's pride shall bring him low. Yes. Pride lands you flat on your face. Humility prepares you for honors. That's what I'm talking about. Value is knowing the importance of people in your life. Value is knowing the importance of people in your life. No matter how big your shop is, you need people to patronize you. You need people to broadcast you. Oh yes, no matter how skillful you are, you need people to give you a job to do for them. Yes, no matter how intelligent you are, you need people to acknowledge that and congratulate you. So, a business without people is useless. Yes, a talent without people is useless. A ministry without people is useless. Skills, intellect, talent, and gifts without people, they are useless. Value everyone that crosses your path. Yes. I saw somebody on my way home one day standing and issuing some small cards. And I just lowered my window and got the card. And I saw, learn guitar within a week. <laughs> learn a guitar within a week. And I said, I have to look for this man. I need to learn a guitar. <laughs> so he has the skills, but he needs people. He has the skill to train people, but he needs people. So soon you'll see me in this studio with a guitar here. Said, learn a guitar. And I asked him, are you sure? I said, talk to me. I'll train you guitar within a week. And I said, I'll go for it in Jesus' name. <laughs> a Christian that lacks respect for people should be pitied because he will be abandoned and ignored. Yes, you'll be abandoned and ignored. Let this settle in your mind today. In the system of divine support, it is man that God uses for men. God uses men for men. Yes, listen and listen to this. At some point in your life, you need someone to prophesy into your life. At some point in life, you need someone to give you an idea. Yes, you need somebody to tell you that wig is old. That hairstyle is not good. That dress is short. You need people that can correct you. You need people that can tell you that suit is good, but not your type. You need people, yes. At some point in life, you need someone to teach you a skill. At some point in life, you need someone to counsel you. Yes, at some point in life, you need someone to caution you and warn you and tell you, Please stop eating junks. If you continue eating this way, your health is in danger. He cautions you about your eating habits. He can tell you, please, you can also eat well now because when they look at you, you look malnourished. So they tell you, please, can you eat? Add a little bit of starch. Add a little 
of proteins. <laughs> there are people who can advise you. Don't tell me my body, my choice. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me my dress, my choice. Let people talk and correct you. Yes, there is nothing like my dress, my choice. You need people to tell you your choice is wrong. Yes, there are people who must tell you your choice can be wrong. Don't tell me my food, my choice. You may be eating junk. So when somebody tells you this one, uh, I don't see you going far with this kind of diet. These are people in life that you need to caution you, to warn you. I hope I'm helping somebody somewhere. Listen to this. Be a solution to someone's problem. Yes. And let someone be a solution to your problem. Don't be a know-it-all. Don't be a know-it-all. Ask questions. Ask questions. Proverbs 18.16. Yes. Proverbs 18.16. Follow me closely. Oh, yes. Listen to this. A man's gift, a man's gift makes room for him. It will make room. But even if it makes room, there must be people that you will meet that are called great people. It will bring him before great people, great men. So every man, it doesn't matter your gift. You will still need to meet men. Yes, you'll need to meet men as, listen, as always, people have skills, they have talents, but they have never met great men. They have not yet met great people. I read a scripture here before we wind up two or three scriptures. Matthew, I mean, Luke 22, 7. Let's start with uh, Luke 22, 7. Jesus is almost in his last days before crucifixion. So he need to have holy communion or have supper with his disciples. And they needed somewhere to meet in Luke 22 verse 7. Follow me closely. It says, Then came the day of the unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed, or where they must slaughter, just like the Old Testament. They slaughtered the lamb and smeared the blood on the doorpost. That is the Passover. So what happened? And he sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare us Passover that we may eat. Go prepare. And they said unto him, Where do you want us to prepare? Where? Because we don't have a house. Do you want us to prepare it in a hotel? <laughs> and he said to them, Behold, when you are entered into the city, when you have entered into the city, there shall a man meet you. Grosala Gadaya. There shall a man meet you. We need people that will meet our lives. We need people that we will encounter in this life. I pray, may you meet the man you have dreamt of. May you meet the man of your dreams. May you meet a divine helper. You, as you enter the city, you shall meet, uh -huh, or a man shall meet you. So there are times you meet a man or the man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he enters. There are people that will meet you. Follow them because they carry the solution to your problems. They carry the solution to your problem. Everyone requires a helper. I'll be building up on this because you need a helper in this life. You cannot stay outside there without help. Maybe your helper is speaking to you right now. How will I help you? I want to invite you this Sunday. I want to invite you this Sunday. This is Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi. This is where we are. And more so, 
I want you now to tell me, man of God, I want to partner with Mountain of Deliverance Church. I want to partner with 1,000 shillings today, just 1,000. Yes, get to your pay bill number and tell me, I partner with Mountain of Deliverance Church with only 1,000 right now. 1,000 shillings right now. That is our pay bill number, 4130469. Account, write me your name. Yes, because I want to be praying together with you as I mention your name. God bless you. Those who are online, get to your pay bill number and tell me, man of God, I want to be of help to this ministry because you have spoken, you have planted the word of God in our lives. That is our pay bill. Get your 1,000 shilling for this service. Tell me, I need helpers. I need helpers. Father, connect me to my helper. May you meet your helpers and may your helper meet you in the right position and location. Where are you? Yes. Tell me, man of God, I'm sending my 1,000 right now. 4130469 is our pay bill number. Account is your name. Just write me your name. Tell me I am a partaker of this grace. I am unlocking the gates of my helpers, divine helpers. You would have gone so far in this life if you met your helpers or if your helpers met you. If your helpers met you. Jesus tells them, you go down the city, a man will meet you. A man will meet you. Oh yes, this is a divine helper. He will meet you. And that is what I'm praying for you, that you will meet a man will meet you. A woman will meet you with the keys of the vehicle you desire in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, every Sunday we are right here, our services at the Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi. And this Sunday, I want you to be my guest right here. Are you in Roiro? Yes, this is our Sunday, Sunday service. This is what we are made of, excellency. This is what we are made of, powerful word of God, powerful, powerful word of God. This is Sunday service. I don't want you to miss your visitation. Yes, I want you to come this Sunday. Are you in Gong? Are you in Kisarian? Are you in Juja? Are you in Thika, Kitengela? Yes, I am just uh, in Nairobi right here on Moranga Road. Allow me to pray together with you. Allow God to meet you at the point of your needs. In the name of Jesus, our pay bill numbers are on the screen. I want you right now, right now, get to your pay bill number. Tell me, man of God, I partner, I partner. Look at that service. Mega service very soon. The balcony has already uh, started attracting people in the balcony. Yes, the balcony is getting more people. Maybe soon we may have several multiple services. This is where excellency meets destiny. Look at that. Where destiny meets excellency and excellency meets uh, destiny. You can't afford to stay at home. Organize yourself this Sunday. I want you to come in your numbers. Come with your family. Come with your children. We have Sunday school classes. We have ample parking. Ample, ample parking for your vehicles. Ample parking. This is Mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi. Yes, this is where we are. And I don't want you to forget, every Thursday, I have a mega, mega service here dealing with curses, witchcraft, stubborn powers. Power. Oh, yes, this is our deliverance service. It's not another mega service. Send the sick here. Send the oppressed. Send all those whose lives have stagnated. We'll be breaking these curses here. We'll be breaking the powers of limitation. Every Thursday from 9 in the morning, come early. We want to start closing the doors. 
We may start closing the doors because we want you to be early here. Nine o'clock by 11, nine, uh, 10, 30, 11, we close the doors because I want people to hear the word of God. This is a deliverance service. I pray for people one after the other. Carry your sacrifice. Carry your sacrifice and say, I want to place this sacrifice on your hands, man of God. This is what happens here every Thursday. I pray for people. I lay my hands on them. Why? The Bible says, you shall lay your hands on the sick. They will recover. Lay your hands on the sick. They will recover. And that is a grace that God has placed in my life. I see destinies changing here. I have seen the demonstration of raw power. Yes, are you watching me wherever you are online? I want you to get to your pay bill number right now. Tell me I am partnering with this mountain. I partner with the mountain of Deliverance Church. I want to partner with the mountain of Deliverance Church, Nairobi. Yes, where are you? Where are you? Yes, send your sacrifice. Tell me I am a partner with only 1,000 shillings. There are those who say, me, I am a daily partner of 100, 100, 100, 100 shillings. Tell me, man of God, I am coming with my mega sacrifice. 20,000, 100,000, 5 million. Tell me I want to partner because of this facility. We take care of this mortgage of this facility in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. With your tithes, with your offerings, you are welcome. Our tithes and offerings and sacrifices, pay bill numbers are on the screen. Triple two, triple one. An account is 211-2407. I want you to mark those numbers and take a shot of them. If your phone can be able to take a snap, yes, uh, just save those numbers because God is about to send your financial helpers, your divine financial helpers on your way. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Yes, are you there and saying, man of God, I want to be born again. I want to be born again. Repeat this prayer together with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I am a sinner. I don't want to die. I repent all my sins. From today, I accept Jesus to be Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord. From today, I am born again. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. You are born again. My numbers are on the screen. Talk to me. Tell me, man of God, I am now born again. I am now born again. I look forward to seeing you again. All my numbers will be on the screen. I'm waiting to hear a call from you. All my numbers, 0719-7272. These are all my numbers. These are my numbers. 0701-343434-0725-120124. This is Dr. Oracle signing out of the studios. Looking forward to seeing you again. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. 